the winner of this next bout will go on to face the Bay Area Derby Girls tomorrow to duke it out for fifth and sixth place in the tournament. Whereas the other team advances to the Sunday late morning bout to play Jet City for seventh and eighth place in the tournament. Well, fans, we have had an amazing day full of action here on day two at the 2011 WFTDA West Region Playoffs. And we still have two bouts this evening to go and then a full day of action tomorrow. So if you are joining us, thank you very much. Make sure you get a chance to check out the live stream and the high definition feed, only $20 and worth every single penny. So taking the track there in the Navy and Silver, we have Denver Roller Dolls Mile High Club. The jammer is number 303, Juska. In the pink and burgundy, we've got the in, the uh, Sacred City Derby Girls. Number 209 is their first jammer. That is Jammin' Jewels. Teams are lined up, just waiting for the referees to start the bout. That first whistle sends the blockers. <clears throat> That second set of whistles sends the jammers and they are off quickly. Jam Jewels trying to work the outside for Sacred City. Juska breaks through first. She was clean. She's going to be a lead jammer, giving her the privilege of calling off the jam at any time. The two skaters out there wearing stripes on their helmets are the pivots. And number 16, Slingshot, is the pivot for Sacred City. Number 99, Tracy Akers, is the pivot for the Mile High Club. Jam Jewels breaks the pack for Sacred City and. Four points picked up by Denver, and the jam was called off. And folks will be thanking a number of our sponsors for this tournament during the course of tonight's bout. We'd start, like to start off by thanking Dr. Hauschka. They celebrate the fresh, fresh faces of the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. You can stop by their booth if you are in the venue and get your fresh face. Very interesting tactic just there. Ariel Quigley, the pivot for Denver, kind of stretched herself out on the pivot line, and by moving her hips backwards, she got an illegal procedure minor for one of the other blockers lined up that was in front of her hips. Colt 45 mired in the back of the pack right now. Denver with two blockers to the back. Trying to work her way through. We've got a fast pack pace this jam. Jamming for Denver. We have number 270, Crystal Sprouse. She is out of the pack but she is not going to be lead jammer due to a no pass, no penalty situation. She passed one of the other blockers legally, but not while in bounds, so she doesn't get credit for it. Colt 45 being reset at the back of the pack. Carson and Begamon holding her back right now for Denver. Begamon, a very strong blocker for Denver, known as a jammer killer. Carson, no slouch in that department herself. Some excellent positional blocking, been on display all weekend long. Fighting at the front of the pack, the blockers get too far away, and Crystal Spouse is let through. That's a grand slam for Denver. Colt 45 trying to work on the outside lane of the front straightaway, being pushed to the outside of turn one. Colt 45 is still on her initial pass, not yet clear to score. And we see Neil and Wheat, number one for Sacred City, taking a penalty. She will sit in the penalty box for 60 seconds. And you see Cole 45 at the back of your screen. They're still being held up by two Denver blockers, still fighting her way through on that initial pass. Sprouse out now for another Grand Slam. First blood to the Denver Roller Dolls, up to 14 points on this jam so far. Denver continues that stifling defense. Three blockers at the back of the pack. Colt 45 having a hard time contending with that right now. She cycles up. She picks up lead jammer status. She was the first jammer through the pack legally on her initial pass. Calls off that jam. However, three more points for Sprouse at the end of that jam. Also in the last jam, number 22 Slapjack for Sacred City joined Neil and Weep in the penalty box. So we have a four to two advantage in the pack for Denver. On the jammer line, we have number 33 for Denver, facing number 44 for Sacred City. That's Natalie Marr in blue, and four closer for Sacred in the pink and burgundy. Four closers had a pretty good weekend so far for Sacred City, returning to the jam line once again. No pack to start this jam as the Denver blockers take a knee, and the jammer's off quickly. Again, the, uh, the uh, extended 
elongated the lineup on the pivot line, giving an illegal procedure minor to number 23, Axel Breaker for Sacred. Through the back, the lead jammer is Natalie Marr for the Denver Roller Dolls. You can see Four Closer there trying to battle Akers at the front of the pack. She makes it through, but however, it looks like she picks up a track cut pen major penalty. She is headed to the penalty box for one minute for Sacred City. That's our first power jam of the game as Natalie Marr is unopposed on the track. Slingshot number 16 for Sacred City also being sent to the penalty box for a cut major as well. And that's just as Neil and Weep comes back into the track as well as Slapjack. So that was uh, one Grand Slam pass so far for Natalie Marr. She's coming up now, engaged in another one. Some penalty trouble already early for Sacred City. And Marr through the pack, and that's gonna be a four point pass. You can see the pack jockeying for position there. We got three Denver blockers at the back of the pack, setting up shop, trying to slow the pace of the pack, make it easier for their jammer to get around. And Marr through again. That's going to be a full five points on that pass. Denver came into this tournament seeded third, so obviously a very strong team in the West region. They did lose their opening bout to the Rat City Roller Girls. That has put them out of con contention for advancing to the championships. However, they have uh, they strongly defeated Tucson earlier today and showing quite a bit of power against Sacred City right now. Sacred City's jammer looking for any kind of light she could possibly find. Foreclosure trying to find a way through that pack. Akers making life difficult for her. She is finally through. Foreclosure gets through the front of the pack right as the jam expires. And so after a few jams, just about five minutes into the first period, the score does stand at 43 points for the Denver Roller Dolls. Sacred, Sk Sacred City yet to score. We want to thank Elemental Technologies, the world's most powerful video processing solutions for their sponsorship of the WFTDA. Next up, number 2010, Judy Jettison jamming for Sacred City, facing number 12, Caitlin Krause for the Mile High Club. Caitlin Krause working away outside to inside through turns one and two. Denver's blockers trying to execute a trap and st stretch the pack backwards. They've got uh, number 29, Sp a Spiller, there. Krause is now through, and she legally passed all of her opponents while in bounds. That makes her lead jammer. Pack battling it out on the far side of the track. Number 2010, Judy Jettison trying to get around the last blocker, Carson, at the front of the pack for Denver, and she is let go. She is now clear of the pack for Sacred City. Pack is pretty tight now, moving into turn number three, but they get spread out as some hits. Knock hooks around, Kraus picks up her four points and calls off the jam. Yet another scoreless jam for Sacred City. Coming out now in navy and silver for Denver, we've got Heather Juska, number 303. Her opponent is Jammin Jules, number 209. In the pink and burgundy, the Sacred City Sacrificers. On fans, Adam Wheels is the official wheel of the WFTDA. Adam Wheels. Jam is underway. And Denver takes her time a little bit, stall around the pivot line, but they finally cross over that pivot line. That lets the jammer skate. Juska takes the outside track, wastes no time getting through lead jammer Denver. Jam Jules trying to work her way through turn four. She hits the front straight away. Dorado doing a good job working her over for Denver. Jam and Jules makes a break for it. Akers tries to come up and hold on to her, but Jam and Jules is out. Juska, though, through the pack, earning five points and out in front of Jam and Jules. It's a race now. Right back across the jammer line. Let's see what these jammers decide to do. Juska calls it off right as both jammers approach the pack. No more points for that jam. Now we're just over eight minutes into the first period and the score stands. 52 for Denver, still a goose egg for Sacred City. 
basketball and fans, the team benches are right across from the pivot line and the Paps Blue Ribbon Jam line. That is the front straightaway, the far straightaway. The second straightaway is on the far side of the track, right in front of the fans. Uh, the penalty box is positioned between the two team benches. Denver there lining up on the knee to immediately create a no-pack situation and let the jammers start skating. Jamming for Denver, we have number 270, Crystal Sprouse, but for closer, jamming for Sacred. First one through the pack, she's gonna be lead jammer. Sacred City fans happy with this right now for closer. Through the pack first, lead jammer, and the fans cheering on their approval. Four closer remarkably effective in the game against Angel City for Sacred City. A fourth minor call for Crystal Sprouse turns this into a power jam for Sacred City. Crystal Sprouse will sit down for 60 seconds. And as if the Sacred City fans weren't happy enough to begin with, they are cheering even more loudly now. So she calls it off with, the four closer calls it off with five points and we have Sacred City on the board. We'd like to thank Five Stride Skate Shop, the preferred shop of Bonnie Thunders, Deranged, Psycho Babble, Susie Hotrod, and Teflon Donna. Five Stride Skate Shop sponsoring the Women's Flat Track Derby Association. Power Jam continuing into this jam. Sprouse in the box, and Jam and Jules taking the star on the track for Sacred City. Denver setting up three blockers in the back to start this jam and Denver blockers as they have been doing all weekend long cycling themselves back up front that makes it difficult for the jammer to get through because though she's passed them once she now has to pass them again. Jam and Jules really trying to get through the front Dolishal teaming up with Akers but Jam and Jules does pass up and Akers can't hold on to her lead jammer Sacred City. Jam Jules doing a great job with her footwork there on the outside of the front straightaway, getting knocked now out of that straightaway. A couple of skaters tangled up on the sidelines, in fact. Akers taking a penalty for Denver will sit down, and earlier Vicky Cruz had to take herself off the track and address an equipment issue with one of her pads, but she's back on the track now. Number 16 slingshot for Sacred City, taking a seat for a penalty. Sprouse is out of the box and she's through the pack. She is now clear to score. Jam Jules being knocked to the inside of turn four by James. James cycles herself backwards. And she effectively makes Jam Jules call off the jam. We've got a score right now of Denver 52, Sacred City 8 as we are about 11 minutes into the first half of play. So coming out now, we've got number 45, Colt 45, to jam for Sacred City, facing number 33, Natalie Marr for Denver. Our pack set up right now, 3-3, three, three, even for both teams, as both teams have one blocker in the penalty box to start this jam. So we saw a pretty dominating performance from Denver earlier, but Sacred City seems to be finding their way. They have, in fact, been able to get some additional points on the board, and Colt 45 pushing at the front, cannot make it past Susie Long. Oh, and Natalie Marr headed to the box for Denver. It's a power jam for Sacred again. Major elbow penalty for Marr. Colt 45 trying to find an answer to the front of the pack, Denver, as they are great at doing penalty killing. If you were able to watch the DRD bout earlier, I talked about the fact that I don't know that there is a team better in the WFTDA at killing penalties than Denver. Long now is once again pushing Colt 45 out of bounds. She has to cycle back. Akers back onto the track now for Denver. Full pack for Denver but they still lack their jammer. It's still a power jam for Colt 45. Well, fans, as you may have seen, Long made that hit in turn four. Quick to regroup, cycled back up and joined her other blockers at the front of the pack, making, again, life difficult for Colt 45, the jammer for Sacred City. Sacred City trying to trap Gabrielle Begemon, one of the blockers for, uh, for Denver, and doing a good job of it, but Colt now... Colt 45 trying to call off that jam. She is not the lead jammer. Assessed an illegal procedure. Minor penalty. And it looks like the power jam is over. Natalie Marr back on the track. In fact, the penalty box has emptied out. Number of skaters went down in turn one. Number 573 Xerox. Last one to regroup. She's back up on her skates, though. 
Lamar back up, out of the box, or out of the pack. Clear to score, so now it's going to be a scoring duel, and with no lead jammer on the track, this jam will expire on time in just a few seconds. But Lamar's through the pack, and that's five points. Colt 45 battling for any last points you can get before this jam expires. Time expires on the jam, and it doesn't look like Colt 45 earned any points on that pass. Thanks to another sponsor, Terminal Gravity Pale Ale. Ta try a local Terminal Gravity Pale Ale now. All right, coming up for the next jam, we're now just about four, 14 minutes into the first period, almost halfway. Four closer again for Sacred City. Again, one of their more effective jammers earlier against Angel City, facing number 12, Caitlin Krauss. And it looks like Cash Money thought that she had the pivot cover on her helmet lined up on the pivot line, did not have the cover, and was assessed an illegal procedure minor penalty. In fact, yeah, no pivot cover in there for Sacred City. That in itself is not illegal. You do not need to feel the pivot. But if you act as a pivot when you don't have the cover on, that is a problem. Foreclosure getting tripped up on the far straightaway. She's quick to regroup, but unfortunately now she was almost clear of that pack. Recycled all the way back to the back. Going to have to pass everybody once again. But Krause is out, and she is not going to be lead jammer. Lead jammer status goes to foreclosure. She realizes it, and she calls it off before Krause can score any points. Very good play by foreclosure. Well, fans, if you're able to make it down to the Memorial Coliseum at any point this weekend here in Portland, Oregon, you need to look for Trigger in the crowd. Trigger, part of Roller Girl Skates. If you're able to find Trigger, you can sign up for a free set of wheels from rollergirlskates.com. We are now past the halfway point in the first period. Score standing, 57 points for Denver, 8 for Sacred City. Not a lot of points scored in the past few jams. We got Heather Juska jamming for Denver in blue, jamming in pink for Sacred City. We've got number 209, Jam and Jules, and Jam and Jules already declared lead jammer, although Juska is chasing her right out of the pack. Juska giving up a stride, maybe two in the way she skates. It may not even be that much right now. Jam Jules trying to hold her back with some positional blocking as a jammer. Great play by Jam Jules as she calls off the jam. No points for either team that time out. Well, fans, if you get a chance to check out Sock Dreams, you can. You can visit their brick and mortar store or you can check them out online. They offer unique, sexy, comfy socks for the roller girl and everyone. That's Sock Dreams. Socks are very important to roller girls. Four closer on the line again for Sacred City. Obviously, cycling to their very effective jammers as often as they can. Number 270, Crystal Sprouse has the star for Denver. And the jam is underway. Krause getting pushed out of turn one, quick to regroup, fighting against those sacred city blockers at the back of the pack. Similarly, four closer went to the outside, found herself out of bounds, had to come back in. It's James to beat now, and she does beat James. Four closer, lead jammer. But again, Sprouse right on her tail. And in fact, passes her up, and four closer calls it off. So Sacred has clearly adjusted. They're, they're obviously able to, to get those lead jammers out, but that the Denver jammers will not be denied. They put on the pressure and force the calls. Denver doing the things that they do best. They skate extremely quickly, and they are also amazing at their positional blocking. Doing exactly those things, and that makes life difficult in a game of derby, sir. The score here is much tighter than the, the prior game played by Denver. We've got Jam and Jules on the line now for Sacred City, facing number 33, Natalie Marr. Cruz exiting the penalty box for DRD. Each pack is light one blocker. So we got three on three in the pack. And again, Jam and Jules through the pack lead Jammer Sacred City. Marr makes a break for it and gets past cash money. No, nope, it's a cutting the track call. It's a power jam. Jam Jules trying to make her way around the outside of turn two, gets bumped to the outside of the far straightaway, and then gets around Carson, and it looks like that's going to be five points for Jam Jules, a grand slam to start off this power jam for Sacred City. A fourth minor for Sacred City's captain, Cash Money, putting her in the box for 60 seconds. 
Champ Jules fighting up against that three wall of Denver blockers at the front of the pack. Dolishaw pushing into the outside, and Jam Jules picks up two points and calls off the jam for Sacred City. Clock ticking down, 11 and a half minutes on the period clock. A reminder that the last jam of every period does reach its natural conclusion, so we don't end a jam just because the period clock expires. And if 30 seconds or fewer are on the clock, they will not run a final jam unless one of the teams calls timeout. Right now, both teams still have all three of their team timeouts for this game. Returning to the Pat Blue Ribbon Jam Line, number 44 for closer for Sacred City, starting this jam out in a power jam situation. She's going to try and cash in on the fact that she is the only jammer of record out on the track right now. Akers and Dorado teaming up to interfere with foreclosers progress through the pack holding the front of the pack we've got long and uh, Cruz Denver great at killing penalties and it's that positional blocking that they are known for and they are putting that on display right now for closer you can see coming out of turn two having a hard time with those blockers she's got one to go and she is now your lead jammer breaking around acres there on the outside the power jam is over. Natalie Marr getting back onto the track, but she's got to get through the pack before she can score. That doesn't take her long, but still, foreclosure in control. Well, and it didn't take her long, not only because of her skating ability, but it was because Sacred City had only two blockers on the track at that moment that she attacked the pack. Foreclosure, head on a swivel, takes a look to make sure where she was. Two points scored by each team in that jam. Foreclosure trying to call it off, doesn't quite get it done because the, the jam isn't over till the fourth whistle blows, and that was enough for Mar to pick up two points. Thank you to Flat Track Revolution. Wear your passion, flattrackrevolution.com. Sacred City on a tight jammer rotation right now is number 209, Jam Jewels again lines up the Paps Blue Ribbon Jam line. Caitlin Krause taking the star for Denver. The pack is fast. Krause trying at the front, only one skater to beat. She goes up on a one skate, keeps it in bounds. Krause is lead jammer. Out of play being called at the back of the pack. That gives a break to Jam Jules as she tries to attack the pack once again on her initial pass for Sacred City. Denver blockers now trying to hold the front of the pack and keep Jam and Jules right in there. It's uh, Rivas and Carson this time. Penalty for Dolishal, gonna put her into the box. Four points for Krauss on that pass, not a full five due to a minor cut on her way through the pack. Jam Jules trying to pick her spot, see if she can find an opening coming into turn two there. But Kraus is back in the pack, only cash money at the front to beat. That's the current pivot and team captain for Sacred City. Vigamon knocks her down. That allows Kraus to re-enter legally, and it's a four-point pass. Because it was a no pass, no penalty situation, she doesn't get credit for that fifth point. Cash Money assessed a minor penalty for direction of play. She hit while skating in the opposite direction of gameplay, and that is not something you are allowed to do. With a little pirouette, Krause through the pack again. This time it's a full five points. The uh, pack now very tight, headed through right back across the jammer line, and Krause is through the pack again. Carson doing a great job of holding back Jam Jules. Jam Jules stopping, waiting to hopefully pick her spot, maybe playing a little bit of jammer defense. Denver back to a full pack now, all four blockers on the track. But now, <laughs> uh, an out of play penalty for Dolishal will put her into the penalty box. Krause through again, this time it's a full five points. Referee crew doing a great job of calling out of play at the back of the pack. One of the toughest things to call in roller derby. Doing a great job so far this bout. Time expires on that jam. Score stands at 81 to 17 in favor of Denver in the blue. Sacred City in the pink. Well, fans, Rydell Skates is a proud partner and the official skate of the WFTDA. That is Rydell Skates. Sacred City going to another jammer for this particular jam. That's number 45, Colt 45. And Juska comes out to the line for the first time in a little while for Denver. The jam starts. The skaters taking a casual pace, but now the last blocker across the pivot line. There go the jammers. Colt 45 being held up by two wall of Denver blockers in the back of the pack. But Juska pushes through. Lead jammer Denver. 
Sacred City had rolled three blockers to the front, trying to hold her back with their three wall, not able to do so for terribly long. Colt 45 dancing to the inside at turn four. She is through the pack on her initial pass. Clear to score, clear to apply pressure to Juska. Juska has to pay attention to where that jammer is. She finishes her scoring pass and calls it off, but not before. Two points scored by Colt 45. Actually, that thumb went up at the last second. It's actually three points scored by Colt 45 there. You are correct. There is one not on the track point for Dolashal in the penalty box. Occasionally due to our vantage point, uh, depending on how the fingers of the referees are turned, it's hard to see that thumb, which sometimes indicates a third, fourth, or even fifth point. That takes the score to 20 points for Sacred City. 85 for Denver. We are down to under six minutes on the period clock. Four closer returns to the jam line for Sacred City. Facing Crystal Sprouse, number 270, with the fierce green skates. Slow pack launch. Begamon, the last blocker in the pack. That gives time for Dolishal to come back onto the track. Still one Denver blocker in the box. Sacred City at full strength right now. Four blockers out on the track. Jammers coming along the second straightaway. Four closer being pushed to the outside of the far straightaway. Tangled up with Begamon and four closers, the one who went out of bounds. But now she's through the pack, only long to beat. Tries on the inside, is pushed to the infield. Dolezal cycling up again. Something Denver is known for. Their blockers cycle up well. Both jammers get through by a split second. Forecloser is appointed lead jammer. Sprouse out in front and Forecloser calls it off. Well, that is one of those things we could definitely say was a photo finish of those two jammers coming out of the pack. That was it, almost simultaneous. But the, uh, it turns out that Sacred's jammer was just a little bit quicker at indicating lead jammer. That gave him priority and that meant that it was their privilege of calling off the jam. Well, fans, Dr. Hauschka, the WFTDA's official bruise healer, lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka's ouch aid. A pair of jammers now in pink and burgundy for Sacred City. We've got number 2010, Judy Jettison. Her opponent is Caitlin Kraus in the Navy and Silver of Denver. Caitlin Kraus with a little positional blocking off the jam line for Denver. That allows them to get their fourth blocker back on the track. Both teams at full strength. Sacred holding on to the front of the pack. Neither jammer through. Caitlin Krause threatening, gets around cash money, is knocked out by Slapjack, who recycles back into the pack, forcing Krause to come back to avoid the cutting the track penalty. Judy Jettison still fighting her way closer to the front of the pack, is knocked to the outfield, has to come back in. Knocked out of turn two. She's going to have to regroup out of play in the back, and she's allowed to come in in front of those two Denver blockers that are reappearing on your screen. Rouse makes it out, and she was first, she was clean, she is lead, but Judy Jettison out as well and applying pressure. Sacred doing an excellent job of adapting to the Denver Roller Dolls game. Sacred trying to push their blockers back up to the front of the pack, knowing that the Denver Jammer coming through first, one point picked up for DRD at the tail end of that jam. Content to call it off with one point is, is Krause. Well, fans, Fast Girl Skates is the industry pioneer in boot sizing and configuration for women's feet. You can check out their brick and mortar store in Seattle, or you can check them out online at fastgirlskates.com. Number 209, Jam and Jules once again taking the star for Sacred City, facing number 303, Heather Juska for Denver. This is a pairing we've seen several times already this bout. Juska fighting her way around the pack, gets around the last blocker, and she is declared lead jammer for the Mile High Club. Pretty quick pace for the pack this time, heading into turn three right now, but now Denver's blocker is trying to slow the pace down and make it easier for Juska to get through for points. Misbehaved, though, throwing a block there that slows Juska down. There, she's gotten the rest of the way through the pack, and it will be a grand slam for Denver. Jam Jules fighting, trying to make her way through that pack on the far straightaway. She's got one blocker to go, but every time it looks like she's only got one blocker to go, another Denver blocker cycles back up. Begamon again doing a great job of that for the Mile High Club. Denver pack shorthanded down to three blockers right now. That's Carson, Begamon, and Long blocking for Sacred City. We've got Axel Breaker. we got Misbehaved. There's a grand slam pass out there for Heather Juska. 
Jam Jewel still fighting to make her way through that pack on her initial pass and again comes up long. Begamon and long at the front of the pack. Jam Jewel seeing daylight once again and she is fighting for it along the front straightaway. Slingshot and Spiller rounding out the pack for Sacred City right now. And their jammer, Jam and Jules, pushing at the front, knocked back to the infield. Juska through another five point pass for Denver. It's That's the little things that Denver does that's amazing. Juska using positional blocking, holding back Jam Jewels, waiting for her blocker to cycle up and then running a clean hammer and nail, recycling Jam Jewels to the back of the pack once again. Jam and Jules trying a little defensive blocking at the back of the pack on Heather Juska, but that earns her a major, a fourth minor. Forearm blocking penalty is going to put her in the box for 60 seconds and is a power jam for Denver. And now a low block being assessed to the pivot slingshot for Sacred City. And another grand slam for Heather Juska. On this jam, Denver has broken the century mark. Time expires on the jam, and the score stands at 107 to 20 in favor of the Mile High Club. Well, and fans, that jam ended with about 47 seconds left on the period clock. It is one of the rules in the WFTDA that if there is 30 seconds or more left in the period, we will start another jam, and that jam will continue until it reaches its conclusion, either by being called off by the lead jammer, the jam reaching its two-minute conclusion. So regardless of what the period clock, is we have one more jam this half and it is a power jam for Denver who has put Crystal Sprouse on the line she holds to the inside line through the pack for lead pack slowing down in turn number two Denver blockers at full strength they've got all four out there and now it's cash money taking the penalty for Sacred City leaving them only two blockers on the track right now number 22 slapjack and number one Neil and weep Number 270, Crystal Sprouse through the pack. This is actually her second Grand Slam scoring pass for this jam. Jam Jewel standing in the penalty box indicating that she's got less than 10 seconds worth of penalty time to serve. Kraus knocked to the infield of the... We got a loose toe stop on the track. That seems to belong to Neil and Weep for Sacred City. She removes herself from play to address the equipment issue and leaves us with one Sacred City blocker on the track. Unusual situation. And it's a grand slam pass for Sprouse. Time has expired on the period clock, so when this jam is over, the half is over. Slingshot rejoins her teammates on the track from the penalty box. And another grand slam for, slam for Sprouse. Neil and Weep is sitting in the penalty box, but I don't... Well, she, maybe she picked up a penalty at the same time as she lost her toe stop. It's a grand slam for Sprouse. 209 Jam Jewels still trying to fight against that three wall of Denver blockers at the back of the pack. Meanwhile, Sprouse making her way through the pack quickly. Gets not though, to the outside of turn one. And that's going to be the end of the jam. Four more points for Denver, and that is the end of the half, folks. Score reading 136 for the Denver Roller Dolls in navy and silver, and 20 points for the Sacred City Sacrificers in pink and burgundy. Ladies cool. and gentlemen, welcome back to the current Denver Roller Dolls versus Sacred City Derby Girls bout at the 2011 West Region Playoffs for the Women's Flat Track Derby Association Bridgetown Brawl. Well, an amazing first half of action we have been witness to. The Denver Roller Dolls doing an amazing job holding on to a 136 to 20 lead over Sacred City. We got some stats out of the first half here. It looks like each team has jammed only four different players, but some nice numbers for those jammers. In particular, four closer for the Sacred City Derby Girls has gotten lead jammer 83% of the time that she's been on the track. Oh, that is an amazing number for Sacred City right there. Compared to that, Heather Juska for Denver has an 80% lead jammer percentage also, not anything to sneeze at. You can hear the live announcers in the background there getting the crowd riled up as we are about to get this action underway in about 45 seconds. And that action brought to you by some of our tournament partners, that being Skate Court, Jules Doyle Photography, and Derby Skins, all proud tournament partners of the 2011 WFTDA West Region Playoffs. We've got the Sacred City Derby girls back onto their bench waiting for 
the Denver Roller Dolls to come back out and take their bench. The officials and are all taking their positions. Obviously, we could not do this without all the volunteer work of the officials, both skating and non-skating. Uh, I see the Denver Roller Dolls are over in the corner there, preparing to return to the action here. Thanks also to our sponsor, DerbySupply.net. They provide the best customer service in the business, period. If you happen to be here in the venue in Portland, you can find their booth up on the concourse. Well, and if you do find yourself lucky enough to be here in beautiful Portland, Oregon, or in Eugene, Oregon, you can visit Voodoo Donuts, another proud sponsor of this weekend's action. Voodoo Donuts, the magic is in the hole. I had one of their jelly donuts yesterday. It was yummy. It is definitely a treat, and it is one of those things that folks coming out here to visit do like to try and get, uh, get a taste of. The officials are performing their pre-period safety check. We do this before every period of WFTDA Derby play. We do take safety of our skaters very seriously. Wearing the navy and silver is the all-star team for the Denver Roller Dolls, the Mile High Club. Wearing pink and burgundy, we have the Sacrificers, which is the all-star team for the Sacred City Derby Girls. My name is Brett Example. Joining me is Mike Jax. And we will bring you all of the action here in the second half of play between Denver and Sacred City. Once again, as you can... As you look at the track, the teams are set up right across from the Pabst Blue Ribbon Jam line and the pivot line, the penalty box in between those two benches. And we look like we are about ready to get underway. Sacred City fielding three blockers as they have got one blocker starting this jam in the penalty box. On the jammer line, we do have number 33 versus number 44. Number 33, Natalie Marr for Denver and number 44 for closer for Sacred City. We have seen these two jammers lined up against each other a few times in the first half. Four closer trying to push her way through. She's made it around her blockers. Three of them set up in the back. Marr goes to the inside, is pushed a little bit out of bounds, comes back in, tries an outside line, and finds herself running into the back of Axel Breaker. First one through, four closer, lead jammer for Sacred City. And Rivas being sent to the penalty box for Denver. And now Noir is out as well. We have, as I was mentioning during the first period, Sacred City really is learning from and adapting to Denver's strategy. And here they get actually a 2-0 win on that jam as Forecloser gets into the back, earns her points, and calls it off. Forecloser was able to get around the first blocker for Denver, lagging at the back of the pack. She passed her legally, netting one point. And as soon as she did that, she got the point for Revis, who is currently sitting in the penalty box for Denver. Here's another jam up. We've uh, jammer matchup we've seen several times already this bout. Number 209, Jam and Jules for Sacred City facing number 303, Juska for Denver. Jammer's on a tight rotation for each team as we've talked about. Jam Jules coming up on the back of the back, pushed to the outside of turn one. And Juska pushing at the front. She is called for a major forearm block. That's putting her in the box. We have a power jam for Sacred City and Jam and Jules out. Lead jammer and soul jammer on the track. Another thing playing to Sacred City's favor right now, they have all four blockers out on the track and the only jammer. Those four blockers you see lagging behind the Denver blockers trying to slow down the pack for their jammer. But the three Denver blockers well known for being able to kill penalties in this situation. They're up at the front of the pack keeping the pace fast. We've got Akers and Cruz right now. Akers bridging to the pack, but they get too far away. It's a grand slam for Jem and Jules. Four Sacred City blockers setting up shop at the front of the pack again, trying to control the play, control the pace. Denver blockers at the back. This is again Sacred City taking a page right out of Denver's own playbook and using it against them. But now it's a track cut penalty for Jam and Jules. She will go to the box. And we see that Juska poised to re-enter in any event, but Jam and Jules' arrival releases her to skate. Acres being sent to the penalty box for Denver. They still have three blockers out on the track. Three blockers as well for Sacred City. We got, no, there are full four blockers, excuse me. We got Neil and Weep, we got Spiller, we got Cash Money and Slapjack in the pack for Sacred City. Juska through the pack, clear to score. She is not your lead jammer. Remember that was given to Jam and Jules, and though she went to the penalty box, that does not get transferred at any point. So there will be no lead jammer this jam. 
Going the full two minutes, of which about 12 seconds remain. Juska threw the pack for points. She earns four of them. Minor back block prevented the full five. Juska trying to get back into the pack before the period clock, the jam clock expires. Doesn't quite make it. No more points on that jam. Looked like two points came in for Jam and Jules. That happens in roller derby. If you are sent to the penalty box during a jam, the jam ref will hold on to your points until either you leave the penalty box or until the jam is over, and then those points will be reported. So we do start this next jam in a power jam for the Denver Roller Dolls. The star goes to Caitlin Krause, number 12 on the line in the Navy of Denver. We have an official timeout called right now. Well, Brad, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank a few more of our tournament partners, those being Derby Skins, Five on Five Magazine, and Fat Tire Amber Ale, all proud tournament sponsors, and we are happy to have them. Coming from Colorado, Mike Checks, I've had plenty of opportunities to sample Fat Tire. It is tasty stuff. Indeed it is. Have you gotten a chance to try the uh, Terminal Gravity IPA since you've been out here by chance? That one I have not tried. I'm going to have to see if I can make an effort to look that one up tonight. Indeed, Terminal Gravity makes themselves a wonderful IPA, and they are also a proud sponsor of the 2011 WFTDA West Region Playoffs. Both teams taking advantage of the official timeout to uh, have a little chat with each other, and we're getting word on what the official timeout was about. There was a clarification to find out exactly why Tracy Akers had been sent to the penalty box. That apparently has been resolved. So now we've got Caitlin Krause, as I mentioned, in a power jam for Denver. Three to two in the pack in terms of number of blockers. Advantage Denver right now. The power jam has just ended as Jam and Jules has come out of the box. Krause trying to get through the pack first. Deflected to the outfield and recycled to the back of the pack. Jam and Jules pushing again through the pack on turn two, gets knocked to the outside of the far straightaway. And Krause takes advantage of the opportunity, comes back in, hugs the inside line through the pack, lead jammer. Jam and Jules pushing against Long. Again, Denver blockers cycling themselves back up front in turns one and two. Krause makes it through and she passed up Gem and Jules. That means she earned the full five points. But Jules now is out of the pack as well and skating not far behind Krause. Krause begins to race, trying to get back to that pack. Sacred City right now with only one blocker on the track. Number 23, Axel Breaker, being assessed her fourth minor penalty. When she got to the penalty box, both blockers for Sacred City that were currently in the penalty box were both standing, indicating that they had less than 10 seconds left of their penalty to serve, and that allowed Axel Breaker to take a seat. However, that left Sacred City with only one blocker out on the track. And Krause took advantage of that. She passed that one blocker and was calling it off as she did so. She earned the full four points, whereas no points were awarded to Sacred City that time out. You have to be a little bit careful with that because the jam does not end until that fourth whistle blows, but it worked out for Denver this time. Well, we have an official timeout and my, my guess right here is it's being explained that the jam can in fact start with three blockers in the penalty box for Sacred City, and that's what's happening right now is that there are three blockers in the penalty box. Two of them are standing, indicating fewer than 10, 10 seconds remaining before they are released. But while the official timeout continues, we want to thank our sponsor, Merch Mama, supplying swag to the Derby Nation, which, if you are hearing my voice, you are part of. Indeed, and we welcome you to this broadcast. If you are checking it out on the free stream, be sure to pay the extra $20 and get the high-definition feed. It is worth every penny. On the jammer line, we've got number 44, Foreclosure for Sacred City, and number 270, Crystal Sprouse for Denver. Sprouse making it through Denver's pack and past the final blocker there. She is out and lead jammer, but Foreclosure also out, not far behind her. Misbehaved, headed to the box for Sacred. Foreclosure giving up less than about a quarter track to Sprouse right now as she comes through, takes her points and calls off the jam. Three points for the Denver Roller Dolls. We did get a clarification on that official timeout. It was, in fact, to explain that the jam can, in fact, start with three blockers in the penalty box. They were just, <clears throat> pardon me, also making sure that that fourth minor had been assessed to the correct skater. So that's going to take the score just over 
Five minutes into the second period at 152 for Denver, 29 for Sacred City. And coming to the jammer line, 303, Juska for Denver, facing Colt 45, number 45 for the Sacred City Derby Girls. Juska wastes no time sailing through that pack. Lead jammer. Denver blockers opening up the far side of turn one in the front straightaway after the pivot line for her. She was able to skate through with no problem whatsoever and pick up lead jammer status. And now they clear the inside line as she blazes through the pack, picking up five more points for the Denver Roller Dolls. The Denver blockers moving up to the front of the pack. We see the sacred blockers trying to come up and open some holes for Colt 45. Not yet successful and another five point scoring pass from Juska. Sacred City falling victim to the numbers game right now. Denver with a full contention of blockers out on the track. Sacred City until now had only two blockers out on the track as number 23 Axel Breaker rejoins the action for Sacred City. But Juska cracks out another five point scoring pass. Pack is now heading into turn number three. Still pretty tight, and Colt 45 makes a break for it. Susie Long trying to hold on, and Juska through the pack. Both, both blockers out. Juska trying to recycle for closer. Doesn't quite work. Or sorry, Colt 45 doesn't work. Colt 45 did an amazing job of pushing, pushing, pushing on Juska. Long assessed an out of play penalty. She's going to go to the penalty box for Denver. Smart play by Colt 45. And that jam called off with one more point for Denver. Well, fans, OHSU is the official sports medicine providers of the Bridgetown Brawl. That's OHSU. Coming out now to the jammer line, we got number 2010, Judy Jettison. For Sacred City in pink, for Denver in navy, we've got number 33, Natalie Marr. And right now it appears we have four, actually a four on two pack advantage for Sacred City. And so the two Denver blockers kind of taking their time over the pivot line, hoping to gain some time for their additional blockers to be released. Judy Jennison trying to work her way along the outside rail for Sacred City. Does a nice job staying on her skates. Well, yeah, Judy Jennison makes a break for it on the inside, but James comes up and punches her out of bounds. That keeps her in the pack and allows Marr to get out for lead. Judy Jennison still fighting, fighting, fighting along the second straightaway into turn three. Only Akers to beat now for Judy Jettison, but Akers one of the very strong blockers for Denver. And ducking to the inside, Judy Jettison is through and clear to score. Mara completes her scoring pass, picking up four points, and she calls it. And folks, let us uh, thank Blood and Thunder Magazine for not only providing sponsorship to the WFTDA, but worldwide roller derby coverage. All right, so we are now nearly one third of the way through period number two of this bout. Score stands 177 Denver, 29 for Sacred City. And Caitlin Krause, number 12 for Denver, takes the Jammer Star facing Gem and Jewels, number 209 for Sacred City. Sacred City originally had a one blocker advantage to start this jam, but Long was standing at the first whistle indicating that she had less than 10 seconds to serve for Denver. She has rejoined the action already, and we are at 3-3 for the blocker numbers for this jam. Joining Rivas and Bigamon in the pack, and both jammers are out. Lead jammer is Jam and Jules, but we also see that Krause right behind her, and in fact passing Jam and Jules up on the inside, and sure enough, that inspires Jam and Jules to call off the jam. No point scored. Very interesting call off right there. Jam and Jules blocker had less than 10 seconds to serve on her penalty. She is currently standing in the penalty box. She still had real estate to give until both jammers hit the back of the pack. May have been able to get her blocker out of the box. Well, it was that's a judgment call because when you're facing skaters like Kraus, she's pretty quick. And if you do let her pass you, she might grab a couple points before you can get that fourth whistle blown. Very effective block, uh, sorry, very effective jammer for Sacred City taking the star. That's number 44 for closer. Her opponent will be number 270, Crystal Sprouse. Neil and Weep with a great job of blocking in the back of the pack for Sacred City. It's a power jam for Sacred City. Crystal Sprouse picks up a fourth minor, namely a track cut. She's going to go sit down for 60 seconds. 
Four clothes are going to try and find an answer to the three Denver blockers at the front of the pack as they enter turn three. Akers, Cruz, and Dolishal out there in the pack for Denver. Neal and Weep, Slapjack, and Spiller constitute the pack for Sacred City as their team captain, Cash Money, heads to the box. But out of the pack, lead jammer is four closer. Four closer able to string out the pack of Denver blockers far enough that they finally had to let her go. Four closer now battling in turn one on her scoring pass. She is pushed to the outfield, has to come back in, and another penalty for a blocker for Second City, this time Spiller. No pack being called. They have to let number 44, four closer go. She puts up five points, a grand slam on the power jam for Sacred City. Sprouse poised to re-enter from the penalty box. Let's see what four closer does now. She comes in three wall of Denver blockers right behind the jammer line. She's trying to get through. Sprouse back on the track and ducks around. I don't know that any of the Sacred City blockers saw her sneak in there. She skates low and she skates quick, able to get through the pack on her initial pass. She is now qualified to score points, but Forecloser calls off the jam before she can get there. It's a full five for Forecloser and none for Denver that time out. Slapjack not happy coming out of turn three, has a few words for Hunter S. Thompson, but skates back to her bench. And so that's Sacred City now at 39 points. 177 for Denver, still, of course, a commanding lead. We are just about 17 and a half minutes on the period clock. Well, Brad, I would like to thank FlatTrackRevolution.com. Flat Track Revolution, wear your passion. You can check them out if you happen to be here this weekend, or you can check them out at FlatTrackRevolution.com. Now we got Juska jamming for Denver, facing Colt 45 for Sacred City. And Juska to the outside, lead jammer. Colt 45 pushing on the outside, runs into the jammer, the blockers from Denver. Rivas and Begamon combine to toss Colt 45 into the outfield, has to come back in behind them. Rivas and Begamon working extremely well together, running a very effective hammer and nail once again for Denver. Juska is in the pack, but having a hard time making it past the Sacred City blockers. But now she ducks to the inside. That lets her through the rest of the pack, and it is a full five points for Denver. Begamon showing a great lateral, lateral movement and positional blocking, holding back Colt 45. Colt 45 still fighting along the outside straightaway. She gets through, and she is now clear of her initial pass. But Juska wastes no time in pulling out one more jam. It's four points this time since Four closer had made it out, and it is, she calls off the jam. Well, fans, if you find yourself down here at Memorial Coliseum either later this evening or tomorrow, you need to stop by the Dr. Hauschka booth and check their amazing bruise healing and skin care products. That's Dr. Hauschka. Now we've got number 2010, Judy Jettison, intentionally taking a fourth minor by lining up behind the jammer line. That's a, a minor illegal procedure. Her fourth one will put her in the box, but also clear her skate for a future jam. With the stars, we have number 33, Mar for Denver, number 209, Gem and Jewels for Sacred City. Mar working the outside of turn one and turn two. Huge hit she absorbed from number 22, Slapjack, coming out of turn four. But then Slapjack got hit herself, allowing Mar to come back in, and Mar through the pack. She is awarded lead. Jam Jules continues trying to push against those Denver blockers at the front of the pack. Cruz trying to hold on to Jam and Jules at the front, doesn't make it. Jam and Jules out and clear to score. But Mar through the pack and calls it off, taking her two points on this particular pass. Thanks to our sponsor, Elemental Technologies, the world's most powerful video processing solution. Number 44, four closer returning to the Paps Blue Ribbon Jam line for Sacred City. That's number 12, Kraus lining up with the star for Denver. Just over halfway through the second period, the score standing at 188 to 39. Sacred City obviously has a ways to go to close that gap, but they have been skating very effectively and even adjusting during this game to not only adapt to Denver strategies, I'm, I've in a couple of cases seen them adopting Denver strategies. Indeed, Carson trying to work over four closer in the back of the pack. Four closer rolls all the way to the outside in turn two, and she is through as your lead jammer. Case in point. Very good lead jammer call there 
for Sacred City. But now Denver's jammer is through. Kraus is also clear to score. And the Denver pack keeping the pace fast, trying to hold on at the front. Four closer skating extremely low, manages to push herself through and past a couple of Denver blockers, picking up two points and calling off the jam for Sacred City. No points for Denver that time out. And again, we have seen this matchup several times already tonight. Number 209, Gemma Jules facing number 303, Heather Juska on the jammer line. This time it's Colt 45 attracting attention of the referee so that she picks up her fourth minor and clears her slate. Denver blockers lining up on a knee to immediately release the jammers. Juska goes to the outside, has no trouble passing through cleanly and earning lead. Less than eight seconds, picking up lead jammer status for the Denver Roller Dolls. Jam and Jules pushing at the front, but Dorato providing some positional blocking to hold on to her, but now ducking to the inside, Jam and Jules also clear to score. Cash money anchoring the front of the pack for Sacred City, making life difficult momentarily for Juska. However, she puts four points on the board for Denver and calls off the jam. This is one of those circumstances where the game is actually a lot closer than the score would indicate. Sacred City executing very well on the track and as I say, adopting strategies and improving the strategies they have. But Denver has the experience, Denver has the skill. They are executing better and able to control the scoring to a greater extent. We'd like to thank Big Brothers Big Sisters, helping children reach their potential. Big Brothers and Big Sisters, proud to bring you today's action. Lining up now on the jammer line, Judy Jettison, number 2010 for Sacred in pink. In navy, we have number 270, Crystal Sprouse for Denver. Sprouse pushed to the inside. Advantage right now is with Judy Jettison, who's trying to get past Rivas at the front, and she does lead jammer Sacred City. Judy Jettison kept pushing at the front of the pack, pushing at the front of the pack, pushing at the front of the pack, finally pushing those blockers out of play, and she had to be let go. She is your lead jammer. Sprouse is out of the pack and cleared to score. That's going to put pressure on Judy Jettison. We'll probably get no more than one scoring pass out of this jam. Bigamon taking a penalty for Denver. And in fact, Judy Jettison calls it off before any points are scored by either team. Fists in the air for ref solidarity. No score in that jam. Thank you to Rebel Jewelry. Rebel Jewelry provides unique silver jewelry downtown. Tell them with your, you're with Derby for a discount. And it's never a bad idea to tell somebody that you're with Derby. Definitely not. Rebel Jeweler does some amazing work. If you happen to be in the Portland area, go check out, check them out downtown. That's Rebel Jewelers. Four closer once again on the line for Sacred City against number 12, Kraus for Denver. And this time it's the Sacred City pack that lines up on a knee to immediately release the jammers. But Kraus capitalizes on it by getting out first and earning lead. Four closer being recycled to the back of the pack once again, pointing out the location of Denver's jammers who are blockers so they are aware of where they need to be. Great battle between four closer and Dolishaw at the back of the pack. Cash money, pivot, and captain for Sacred City, earning a penalty here, sitting down for 60 seconds. Kraus trying to get around Spiller at the front, and Slapjack also providing a big block, but Kraus completes the scoring pass, Grand Slam Denver. Four closer, not, to en not afraid to engage the opposing blockers. Not only is she trying to push through them, but she's actually checking them along her way. Huge hit there by Spiller taking one of the, the defenders for Denver right out of bounds with her. But that's not enough to release the jammer, and Krause is through for five more points. Four closer trying to find an answer right now. Dolashal again and Dorado out front. Four closer with some fancy footwork and she is through the pack on her initial pass. The pack is pretty tight now hitting into turn number two, but Kraus is able to complete the scoring pass. Four points this time since four closer is out of the pack. Kraus trying to close the gap. Looks like she's trying to pass up and she does. Earns one more point, calls off the jam. That's going to take Denver past the two century mark, 207 to 41 on the board right now. We're just under 10 minutes remaining on the period clock. We remind you that the final period of every, final jam of every period must reach its natural conclusion. 
Well, fans, if you find yourself in Portland and you need a ride, you can always contact Portland Pedicabs. Catch a pedicab to the after party tonight. That's Portland Pedicabs. That sounds like a good idea. We got 209, Jam and Jewels out there for Sacred City with the star facing Natalie Marr, number 33 for Denver. Both jammers into the pack, neither one through yet. Big hit there from Axel Breaker, number 23, put Marr out of bounds, but she came back in. She just now went around the outside, lead jammer Denver. Jam and Jewels still trying to fight her way through the pack, coming through turn two. Two blockers for Denver in front of her, and she's pushing against those. Of course, that's Rivas and Long. Carson trying to work her way back up front as well. An assist there from the sacred blocker, number 16, Slingshot. But now Long is the last line of defense for Denver, holding on to Jam and Jewels. Mar through the pack for the Grand Slam. Axel Breaker doing a great job push, putting on a last second block, freeing her jammer, Jam and Jewels. Jam and Jewels. Coming up behind, but Namar is aware of it. She passes one blocker at the rear, earning three points. And that's and she calls off the jam, so that's it for that jam. Spiller freed from the penalty box right at the very end of that jam for Sacred City. That means they're going to start this next jam with three of their four blockers on the track. That's number 16, Slingshot, still in the penalty box for Sacred City. A little friendly interaction between the two jammers on the track. Colt 45, number 45 for Sacred City in the pink, and Heather Juska, number 303 for the Denver Roller Dolls in the Navy. And Brad, it looks like we've got ourselves an official timeout, so I'm going to thank a few more of our tournament partners. I would like to thank Sin City Skates. Iron Doll, Vanilla Skates, and BuyNewSkates.com, all of them proud tournament partners of this 2011 WFTDA West Region Playoff. And as a reminder, the winner of this game will go on to face the Bay Area tomorrow for the fifth place game. The other team will go on to face um, Jet City. Indeed, and fans, we've got a uh, little more than seven and a half minutes left to go in this bout, and then following this will be the Ole Rollers from Olympia, Washington, the Cosa Nostra Donnas, taking on the host team, Portland, Oregon's Rose City Rollers, their travel team, the Wheels of Justice. So it looks like the official timeout is over. The skaters taking their place on the track, and we've just received clarification for the reason for the official timeout. Apparently there was some paperwork that needed to be caught up on by some of the NSOs, is what I am told, and that is taken care of, and we are back to action. Bolt 45 pushing at the front, trying to get around Dorato, but it is Juska who makes it out first for Denver, lead jammer. Colt 45 continuing to fight as she has all bout long. Now up against Akers and Dorado at the front of the pack. Dances around Akers, still got to get around Dorado. She is set free. And it's a five point scoring pass for Juska as she manages to pass Colt 45 at the front. Juska, a powerhouse for Denver, first attracting attention a couple years ago in a four corner feud hosted by the Pikes Peak Derby Dames. Denver Roller Dolls won that tournament, and that's the first thing that kind of got them some national attention. Well, fans, Derby Life offers customized nutrition programs and coaching. Put more life in your game with Derby Life. And which of us could not use that? Reliable jammer for closer, taking the star for Sacred City. Number 270, Sprouse, taking the star for Denver. And for the first time in this game, we see a bunch of the blockers lining up right in front of the jammer line. For closer, takes advantage. She gets through that line of blockers. She's out first, lead jammer. Four closer treating that wall like it was a piece of Swiss cheese, finding a huge hole and skating through it. Sprouse still having trouble getting through there. Four closer pushing, trying to earn points. We got two blockers, one from each team, earning penalties. That's going to be Begamon sitting down for Denver and Slingshot sitting down for Sacred. Four closer through the bout, Grand Slam, Sacred City. Humongous hit put on Sprouse by number 425. Misbehaved, earning herself a penalty for that. She will head to the penalty box for Sacred City. She was blocking to the head there, so high block penalty for Misbehaved. Sprouse is now through the pack and clear to score. Four closers still in control of this jam. Three blockers still out there for Denver. Two out there for Sacred. Revis Long and Carson, the blockers of record right now, trying to hold back. 
for closer. She picks up two more points for her effort and calls off the jam. Axel Breaker and Xerox were the two blockers out there for Sacred City to be replaced by two more as we start this next jam. And for the first time with the Jammer Star in this bout, we got number 13, Evil Shenanigans for Sacred City facing Krauss. Oh, uh, substitution. Colt 45 coming back in to take the Jammer Star. Evil Shenanigans heading back to the bench. Real quick, we'd like to thank Green Monster Roller Sports, Antic Boots, Reckless Wheels, and Moto Bearings, revolutionizing roller derby, Green Monster Roller Sports. So Kraus taking the first attempt at going through there, but pushed to the outfield. Lead Jammer, once again, will be going to Colt 45. Sacred City doing a good job. Major cutting the track penalty for Kraus. It's a power jam for Sacred City. Numbers still, though, in Denver favor, Denver's favor as far as the blockers go. Three to two in favor of the Denver Roller Dolls as Colt 45 attacks the pack on the far straightaway. We got Akers, Dolishal, Rivas, and Begamon trying to hold on to Colt 45. She's not very far into the pack just yet. Her blockers dropping back to lend an assist. Looked like Slapjack being called for a high block penalty. She's going to be exiting the track for Sacred City. That takes us down to only two blockers on the track for Sacred. With a full four up there for Denver. Colt 45 calls it off. Looks like she managed to get her hips past at least one of those blockers because it's two points for Sacred City, taking them to 50 points on the game. Still 220 on the board for Denver. So with just under four minutes left on the period clock, it's not looking too good for Sacred City, but as I've said earlier, they are really playing strongly despite what the score indicates. Well, fans, Adam Wheels is the official wheel of the WFTDA, and Rydell Skates is a proud partner in the official skate of the WFTDA. That's Adam Wheels and Rydell Skates. Starting in a power jam for Sacred, they're putting their jammer out there as number 209, Jam and Jewels. And Jem and Jules now free from the jammer line. Heads up, tries to get through the pack. Well, you can see the lateral movement on display by the Denver blockers right there, trying to hold back Jam and Jules as she gets pushed to the outside of the far straightaway. Holding the front, we still have a couple of blockers for Denver. Oh, and Dorado taking a penalty. She will go sit down in the box for Denver. That was a forearm penalty that's going to lead her to the penalty box. That was a major penalty. And there she goes, Gem and Jules out of the pack. Lead Jammer for Sacred City. A battle in the pack, a fierce one now. Krause out of the box and through the pack. She is also clear to score, so the power jam is over. Let's see if Gem and Jules is able to pick up points before Kraus gets there. And it looks like it. Oh, a penalty now for intentionally skating out of bounds. That's assessed to Kraus. It's a power jam again. It's a fourth minor for Kraus. Three points for Jam and Jules at the end of the jam. Four points now, a late point being called in. They checked with the outside, um, the outside pack ref and wanted to make sure that that fourth blocker did count and that it was not a no point, no penalty pass. So that starts this next jam, which could be the last jam of the, the game. We could also have another one after this. Depends on how long this lasts. Power jam for Sacred City. They have a full pack and only two Denver blockers out there. It's kind of an ultimate jam. Foreclosure has the star for Sacred City. Sacred City's blockers holding back, not attacking the pack, not playing offense for their jammer to start this jam. However, they waited a moment and now attacking the pack. Foreclosure works her way through on the inside. She is your lead jammer. And it looks like, uh, yep, she's passed all of the blockers. A third blocker coming onto the track for Denver, but control remains with four closer. And a, a cutting the track penalty assessed. The ac yeah, the action here is absolutely amazing right now. It's hard to keep track of what's going on. We do have only two blockers on the track still for Denver. Foreclosure makes a break for it. She goes to the outside. Denver blockers speed up. Dorado engaging Foreclosure. Cruz coming back on the track for the Denver Roller Dolls. 
Four closers still trying to find an answer to that front wall of Denver blockers. Prowse out of the pack and cleared a score, but has to go all the way around before she can score any points. Four closer checking in, making sure she knows exactly where she is and calls off the jam for Sacred City, but not before she put five more points on the board. And there are only eight seconds left on the period clock, so we'll only run another jam if one of the teams does call timeout. Time is ticking down. And while we wait to find that out, fans, we'd like to thank Dr. Hauschka, the WFTDA's official bruise healer. Lose the bruise with Dr. Hauschka's Houchaid. And the teams do allow the time to expire. An official final, 220 for Denver, 59 for Sacred City. Clearly, Denver takes this bout, and they are congratulating one another, and will come out in a moment to take their victory lap. So very strong play from both of these teams. Denver able to execute better and take the win. This is Brad Example thanking Mike Checks for being on the microphone with me. Well, thank you, sir. Always a good time calling with you.